So, good afternoon. Well, I think the vlog was filmed in the morning and it actually is still the morning. Um, but unfortunately, for some reason, this microphone is not doing too well. My little shotgun microphone. Um, started crackling up and breaking up and sounding awful. So I'm not gonna use the intro. But in today's vlog, we are going to Pucks Glen. And the idea of this is to film some awesome shots Take some awesome shots using my friend Beatrice. Hello guys. Yeah, gonna try and create some Instagram type images, but creating perspective. And uh, here's a few ideas of what the shots looked like. It was quite a morning, it really was. And I hope you stick with me for the adventure. And uh, yeah. Let's start rolling. Okay, so we have made it now to Inverary and the plan is to head to some charity shops and go see what we can find. Now, if I was one of these super YouTube ultimate vloggers, I would probably bring you with me and would go and explore and I would talk to the camera in front of people and stuff, but I get a bit timid. You know, we spend a lot of time in the middle of nowhere, and I talk to you quite freely, but yeah. So, see you back in the car if we find a, uh, if we find a yellow coat, or we'll see you back in the car even if we don't find a yellow coat, but we'll see you soon. <sighs> so, it ended up coming down to this. Sundays. Red Cross does not open on a Sunday. Should have known this really. I lived in this country most of my life. But Mac in a sack has come through. It's a little bit pink and the yellow one was a little bit vibrant which was never going to work. It was a little bit more like a, uh, a luminous yellow and I wanted that warmer tone. So we've gone for this one and yeah Fingers crossed it'll stand out against them greens. I'm pretty sure it will. But it's time to head to the forest, to Pucks Glen. A location, if you're ever in Argyll and Butte, you definitely want to check out and you will see why. So, here we are, Pucks Glen. And we have a car park full of cars. So the question is, am I gonna be a massive chicken and not film anything? Or am I gonna film, talk to the camera and do a proper vlog? Conditions, pretty good, to be honest, pretty good. Can't complain, there is a big dark cloud coming this way, but that's one of the perks I suppose of buying a Mac in a pack. It is waterproof. I've also got my own waterproof. But the river has definitely come up last night. It's rained a lot, so it should be super pumpy with some beautiful greens and I'm starting to waffle. So I'm gonna set off and see what we can find. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to get my camera set up over here because over there there is nowhere dry to put it and that's where the best vantage point is. I'm going to shoot with my ultra wide angle because I want to, there's a lovely tree just above the waterfall and that's going to be above Beatrice and what I'm going to do is I'm going to have Beatrice looking up into that tree to sort of help guide your eye into that main focal point. So here we are, I'm over and I've got my subject all lined up. So first of all, I've put the waterfall down here, down at the bottom right hand side of the scene that's going to lead your eye up using this little cushion wave here, up into my model here. But I've centralised the main focal point, which is this tree, which is just glowing 
in the most beautiful way. It is just absolutely capturing your eye as a focal point. And then to really give scale to the scene, I've got Beatrice just underneath. Just she's gonna stand off to this side as that cushion wave points round. And then she's gonna look up at that tree up here. That's again, and that's gonna be the compl compl completed shot. But to get the shot, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna shoot it in three parts. I'm gonna shoot one part for the model. I'm gonna shoot one part for the water. I'm gonna slow the aperture down, get a nice long shutter speed. And I'm gonna shoot one part for that light hitting that tree. Cause I don't want that to be washed out. I want that to be vibrant and all the greens around it to be nice and dark. And then in Photoshop, what I'll do is I'll blend all of them shots together to create the final image. And I'm super psyched about this one. I think this one's gonna look absolutely beautiful. And it wouldn't be the same without the model and the color of the jacket. Yeah, it would be nicer if it was an expensive waterproof coat, but you can't have it all. So I'm just gonna get Beatrice into place now. So Beatrice. Beatrice, you can move that way a little bit more. Perfect. And now look up to this red tree. There we are. And stay perfectly still. Yeah. That is good to me. Okay. Now I'm gonna capture longer shutter speed for the water. So Beatrice, you can come out of shot now. So this next shot is gonna be shot on a L10, so ISO 31, F11, and a two second exposure so i'm just going to fire that one off and i've made sure i've dialed it nice and low because what i don't want to do is have that water all blown out and that's looking perfect and now it's just going to be getting that tree and making sure that is perfect so i'm going to raise my iso a little bit so i'm going to go to a four second exposure actually leave everything else as it is four second exposure and fire that off and then i'm starting to get them rich colors in them greens the moment the light is so beautiful in here and that is absolutely perfect and then what i'll do is i'll photoshop the model in there and then there we are we've got our three shots and i'm going to move a little bit higher and see what else we can capture So I've got my next shot in mind and for this shot I'm thinking a little bit more compression in the scene so I'm going to swap from my 15 to 30 and I'm going to go to my 24 to 70 and then with that I can also attach some filters and stuff like that if I need to maybe get a bit of polarizing action so a quick little swap over and then let's get set for the next composition quite like the idea of this next one You'll see why in a minute. Beatrice, go higher. Okay, so I've got Beatrice all set up now, jumping into the back of my camera. So I've got this beautiful waterfall down here in the foreground leading up into Beatrice on one side and this lovely tree, this little tiny tree down here sort of dwarfed by everything else that's going on in the scene and the fact that I've got somebody in the scene with a red jacket on it just makes it so much it just pulls it all together it gives everything scale um, the settings for this super simple I'm gonna take this in a one shot at ISO 31 f11 and a two second timer I'm just gonna fire it off the models gonna stay beautifully still and that's it in the bag now all I'm going to do is I'm going to zoom in Make sure the model is super sharp Oh 
Finished image, beautiful, super happy. Right, now let's go find the next composition. So, for the third shot, we're going to do something slightly different. Uh, the plan is a... It's going to be a composite again, but I've got this beautiful waterfall over here, and I've got these bubbles coming around. Uh, the plan is to do a, a longer exposure to get the bubble, guiding your eye through the foreground, up into the waterfall. The focal point being that beautiful tree up there getting lit up. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to get Beatrice to sit up on this edge up here and sort of dreamily look off into that beautiful tree to help guide your eye through so you'll be able to walk through the scene as, you know, everything matches up and lines up. But the way I've set my polarizer is quite important. Most people would think, polarize it all, darken it all off, maximize bubble content. What I am going to do is I'm not going to do that. So I'm going to flip into camera mode so you can see what I'm looking at. And like I said, I've got these bubbles coming around this way, up into that waterfall. Beatrice is going to sit over here. Tree is the focal point. Nice and simple. Now, if I turn this polarizer all the way off, as you can see, I get barely any bubbles at all because it's not the thick white foam. It is just little bubbles. Now, if I turn this a little bit more, it's still darkening off, so you're still cutting through that reflection, but also I'm seeing more bubbles, and that's the effect that I'm going for. A little bit of bubbles, but not completely gone. And that's gonna maximize the potential of this image. But I'm gonna get the first shot now. That's gonna be on F11, L10, and a four second exposure. So now I've got my first shot. What I'm going to do is I'm going to get Beatrice to come up and sit on this ledge over here. So she's just taking off her actual coat because a machina pack isn't known for its thermal lining. It is literally, as it sounds, a waterproof in a jacket. Okay, so I'm going to stick you up here. So Beatrice is going to head up onto the, onto the little ledge. And she's going to find somewhere where she can sit comfortably and sort of... I don't want her to overpower that tree. And by standing there, she's gonna overpower it. She's gonna find somewhere to try and sit down. There we go. And now what she's gonna do, she's gonna look off towards that tree to completely, that line is all the way through and up into that tree. So the visually, you walk through the scene and nothing is jarring. Apart from that color of red that just stands out from the scene. So I'm gonna go down there, I'm gonna speed up my shot so I'm probably going to be shooting on a fifth of a second or something like that so that there's no movement in my model. That's really important. I don't want that her to be soft. I want everything else to be soft, but her to be pin sharp. So all I'm doing now is trying to get Beatrice into position. Now I want her on that third, so she's going to be up here looking at that tree. I think she moved there, so I'm going to take another shot. And stay still. Look at that one. There we go. So I'm underexposing, so I've got no highlights blown out on her face. And as I zoom in, she's really adding size to this scene. So there's nothing blown out on her. And there we are, that is the finished product. A beautiful shot. But I think, I'm, I'm not sure how many more images I'm gonna capture while here. Yeah. I'm gonna carry on walking up the stream and see what else we can find, because this place is an Instagram mecca. Honestly, if you wanna come to Scotland, you wanna get shots of epic trees. Just look at that view behind me. That one massive Scots pine coming straight up. Don't know if it's a Scots pine, might not be. Somebody will probably comment and tell me what it is but what a place 
it is so mind-blowingly beautiful um, but gonna keep exploring further up and if we find any more shots you will see but yeah what a place Scotland I say it every vlog you are beautiful We have made it to the top of Pucks Glen now. It's flattened out and following the river is prohibited. It has a sign. We all know I follow the rules. And uh, yeah, I think it's been pretty sweet. Captured some nice Instagram type shots and that was the purpose of this vlog. I want to say thank you to B up there. Thank you Karen for inviting me and thank you to you guys for joining our journey. Yeah, so it's been, it's been pretty sweet. Um, the one thing that I'd like to take from this is using people in your images, or at least asking people to be in your images, using sounds a bit awful. Um, vibrant colors, contrasting colors. So that red against the greens really meant that that person stood out. Um, and other than that, if you're in Scotland, in Argyll and Butte, definitely come to Pucks Glen. It is stunning, absolutely stunning. As long as you don't mind taking pictures around lots of people walking up and down it's a little bit like a highway a little bit more like a highway than i normally go into locations but nice morning captured some nice images and hopefully passed something on but other than that have a lovely weekend and i'll see you next time